But hey, everybody. Burglar- hey, everybody. It's... <laughs> Burglar two to three here, and I'm mad. And and I'm I guys, I'm Joe, and I'm not mad yet. But I also just watched. Well, I am mad. I just watched episode three of The Legend of Korra, and we're mad. We're mad. <laughs> we're mad. Um, um. So this has been something <laughs> I've been uh I've been meaning to do for a while now. Ever since uh I saw this video, um. So, brief little history. For we're gonna give our little histories here before we start here. Okay. Um. I'm Burger Lord two to three. Many people call me Ryan. Many people call me Faggot. So that's me. And uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender is my favorite show of all time. Faggot. <laughs> so uh, it's mine too. So I guess what does that make me? So um, um, the reason why Avatar: The Last Airbender is my favorite show is because. Um, my whole life, when it, well, not my whole life, but when it was coming out and I was a little kid, I thought it looked stupid. I thought it looked like the dumbest shit. It looked like an anime, and I did not like anime. I didn't like Pokemon. I, that's what I thought anime was. Shit like Pokemon or, or Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, people playing cards and throwing monsters out. That's what I thought anime was. I didn't understand what it was. Um, I actually didn't know this history. Continue. <laughs> um, and then... Something happened in seventh grade. It was, uh, I think it was around Christmas time. It was a uh, winter break. Um, and on Netflix, the last Airbender movie was on Netflix. Oh no! And I remember, I remember because as a kid, <sighs> when we went to see a movie in the theater, I don't remember what it was, but a trailer for the last Airbender came out. My dad was like, "Hey." That looks like a cool movie. And I was like, no, Dad, that's based off a stupid anime. It's going to be bad. So <laughs> technically you were right <laughs> to some degree, but, you know. Um, but so I, I was like, you know what? It does look sort of cool. Maybe I'll watch it. I remember the trailer. He oh, was like blowing I'm... wind. On, like he got rid of the candles. Um, and the whole movie, uh, it was really bad. And I don't even remember it. Like I wasn't even paying attention. I was like, Wow. That was really bad. Like, I was in seventh grade, and I was like, wow, that was really bad. My brain wasn't even developed, and I said, you know what? I wonder what the show is like. I wonder if it's better. Because I remember seeing a few episodes as a kid, and I was actually spoiled. I actually, like, because I remember Zuko was the bad guy, and I remember him being the bad guy, and I hated him. But then I saw an episode, it was um, the Sun Warriors, and him and Aang, Zuko and Aang are working together. And I was like, wait, he becomes a good guy? What the heck? So I went and watched the show. I think the first episode I watched was Nightmares and Daydreams. And I was like, this show's so funny. I love all these guys. All these characters are so great. And then I realized all these episodes are connected. They're not like a regular cartoon where like each episode is just, you know, to make you laugh. So I went all the way to the beginning. Watch it from beginning to end. Favorite show of all time. It's fantastic. I rewatch it every year. That's how much I love it. It got me into anime and made me realize that I was being a stupid little dumb dumb faggot <laughs> for Wow. <laughs> for, Whoa, we're for, just throwing them all out there today. For not liking anime, for not giving anime a chance. And uh yeah, it's just it's just a fantastic show. So that's my history. Don't say I'll ble- I'll bleep it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why do people think re- such a bad name. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, go ahead. Uh, what's your history there, Mr. Man? Uh, hi, I'm Mr. Man. Some people call me Joe. Mm. Um, I have always loved Avatar The Last Airbender. In fact, it is a show that I grew up watching from beginning to end. Uh, it is my favorite show of all time, and it has remained that way for almost 12 years now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... I don't watch it every year because I never, like, had the show to watch. But now that it's on Netflix, oh, yeah. I watch it all the fucking time. Yeah. <laughs> it's... I, I forgot to... I, I left that part out. It was on Netflix back in the day. That's how I watched it. They took it off, so I bought all the discs. I have the whole DVD collection. But anyway, continue. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still going to buy the DVD collection, mm-hmm. even though I know it's all on Netflix, if that gives you any idea. Yeah. I just want to own it. Yeah, and they, they have Blu-rays out now, too, so... Ooh, I can't use that, but... Ooh. <laughs> but that's our history with it so mm-hmm. um we've i've also recently rewatched the show i know ryan has too because well i rewatch it every year of so. course he does <laughs> so you know uh that's where we stand right now ryan has told me 
that this video that we're about to watch is going to make me so mad. Um, it made me mad. <laughs> it's not that everything that they're about to say is wrong. It's no. just that a good fucking chunk of it is. Okay, so I, if we're, we're moving on now to this topic. So, yeah, this is going to be the subject of the video. So this guy, uh, this guy right here, uh, his name is Mahler. He's a YouTuber I really, really respect. Uh, I, I first found him... That's Rand- how we're going to tear him to shreds, by the way. Well, because we- well, because he <laughs> tore into shreds something wrong, I'm going to correct him. <laughs> He he welcomes that shit. I mean, I mean, oh, I, at least good. at least I I hope he does. He hasn't really brought this video up to my knowledge anyway, so maybe he realized he fucked up. But uh, not acknowledging it uh, is a bad thing. So I, I'm here to remind you. If you ever see this, you probably won't. But uh, <laughs> this is um, this is basically just therapy for me. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Mahler. Uh, uh. He I first discovered him when the Last Jedi came out, and he had a whole critique when the last jedi came out i actually liked it because i was expecting an empire strikes back remake but it wasn't it Mm. it wasn't what i was expecting so i liked it um and i didn't think it was good i just thought it was better than the force awakens which that movie's bad too (laughs) but uh do you think the force awakens is bad very bad Uh, trust me give it a rewatch it's yeah, fucking horrible. Uh, Every, everything, everything is a coincidence. Everything is a throwaway line. Everything doesn't matter. <laughs> I will say this. I mean, The Force Awakens was nice and all, well, the first time I watched it, but I was never... We shouldn't make this about Star Wars. I no, will talk no. about this forever. <laughs> yeah, Star I, Wars <laughs> I will, tends to do that. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I also don't want to destroy my credibility by giving my opinion about Star Wars. <laughs> Right. Um, but yeah, I watched his Last Jedi videos. They're, they were really good. He made me realize, okay, Last Jedi is not a good movie. I still liked it, though. I mean, he, he makes, there's a very clear line. He He's all about objectivity. Subjectivity, you can like something, but if it's bad, you have to recognize that it's bad. A lot of people, like, mix in subjectivity with something being good or bad. Uh-huh. But that's not how it works. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I understand that. I still like the movie. Uh, then I, when it came out on Netflix, I watched it again. And I was like, "What did I like about this?" And I hate it. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I think the only reason why I liked it was because uh, it wasn't what I was expecting. But once you were able to expect, I mean, it's literally the Empire Strikes Back, except the opposite things happen. It's basically someone copying your homework but just filling in the wrong answers. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, so he made this video. People, a uh, uh, little bit of history. I haven't watched every efap this is a podcast he does called every frame of pause a great name and logo um i haven't watched all of them i've been watching them a lot more recently it's a great podcast where they uh they go over review channels you know like cinema sins i mean that's not really a review channel but you know people like that other youtubers that review shit and then they critique their critiques and it's really fun and interesting um and on one of them, I'm not sure which one it was, uh, one guy, his name is Rags, someone mentioned Avatar to him, and he reacted uh, really, really dickishly. He was like, wow, that show, that that show for, you know, the R word that you don't want me to say, you know, it's like, I've I, I've seen, sh-, he's like, I've seen shit, that, and I, it just looks like the worst thing ever made. He basically had my reaction when I was a child. See, that's the thing. You have to actually watch it before you can say anything. But um, I don't get this whole thing. Everyone being like, "This looks like it's for children because it is a cartoon." Well, technically, yeah. I mean, I would say it's for all ages. But yeah, it exactly. Is, it is, um, you know, not an I wouldn't say an adult show, but it is for all ages. It's like Pixar. I'm just saying, you know? as an adult, I can definitely enjoy. Yes, it. but it's not like you know, dark and violent or moody or anything, and that's another reason why i love it so much but yeah so he reacted very dickishly to it it can be very dark and violent and moody sometimes (laughs) actually there's there's definitely some points in the show where things get pretty fucked up there's a lot of mature elements and that's what i love about it yeah exactly but it's not like you know there's blood and guts everywhere and shit like that that's what i mean by that (laughs) um then it'd be hot (laughs) (laughs) um but uh yeah, so he reacted horribly, and he basically called everyone who liked Avatar an idiot. And it's like, that's not how you handle a situation. Ah, yes, objectivity. <laughs> ah, good. Yeah. He 
was most likely joking, but the way he did it, like, he hasn't really addressed it that way. He sort of seems to be, like, he comes off as seriously mocking people rather than jokingly mocking people, if that makes any sense. Hey, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. So, Mahler here, he was like, you know what? I'll watch the show. Um, so, he was watching it, and then he made this video. And now this video... So a lot of strange things about it. First of all, this wasn't live. Usually these are live. The only time he doesn't make these live is if he's doing like um like a meme video where he's looking at people's memes because they use copyrighted content. He doesn't want to get taken down while on stream. Um but he didn't do this one live. And this is something that a lot of his fans were cuz a lot of his fans are avatar fans. At least that's what I'm able to see. Um and uh, he so he did this. And he didn't do it with him or his group of friends. He just got this one guy, a literature literature devil. And this guy, he says that he hasn't seen the show in a long time. Like seven years, or I might be exaggerating. But he, he said he hasn't seen the show in a long time. And Mahler just watched it. He didn't get someone who really enjoys the show or who really like understands the show and watches it all the time like I do. Hmm. Um, he got this random guy. I mean, he's probably been in other efeds beforehand i'm sure he wouldn't just grab like a literal stranger but um he didn't get someone that who like you know is the avatar guy a lot of people mention this guy er i haven't watched any of his mm. videos but apparently he's like an avatar fan and he's been on the show before so it's like why didn't you get him um and they basically just did this um and Mahler said uh, Mahler gives Avatar a 4 out of 10 at the beginning. Wow. And then he explains all the reasons why he thinks that. And most of his points are wrong. I watched the first hour and 40 minutes, and I think he only said two things that are right, and those things are things that every Avatar fan already knows. <laughs> so. Well, okay. I'm not excited for this. Also, I just really picture this guy. I mean, I don't know anything about this Mahler guy or even what he sounds like. I just picture him taking a drag from a cigarette as he pulls up to some guy on the street. He goes, hey, kid, you want to be in a video? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's what we're doing today. We're going to do an EFAP. On this EFAP, we're going to listen to a point, pause it, discuss it. And we're also, uh, I have a piece of paper here and a pen. and um, Official. Yeah, we're going to tally how many of his criticisms we think are right. Anything that we can't defend or anything we're like eh, you know what that's right you know like if we have if we're not able to defend it if we're not able to come up with a reason that's in the show so that most of his problems are answered in the show so therefore they're not problems but if we can't think of well i don't think there's an answer for this then that would be a legitimate criticism so um, I think without further ado, we should get started, right? I can't now. wait to see how all this paper picks up on the mic with you going full, 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 full. How, how long has it been? This intro has already been 20 minutes like theirs. So we're like no different from them. By the way, Mahler's going to make fun of us for this. This is not going to be one really long video. He likes long videos and shit. But this is probably going to be a multiple parter series since we don't have all the time in the world on our hands. It's just called Mahler is wrong. It's just... <laughs> um, no, I'm kidding. So, uh... Um, I think we should get this started. Um, by the way, I'm gonna cut this out. But um, this is a mini. Yeah, <laughs> it's four hours long. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. He loves long shit. Most of these are nine hours long. <laughs> um, I'm, but, I'm sorry. <laughs> that is that is out fucking rageous. That is outrageous. <laughs> We, that's, that's a different point for a different time <laughs> uh, about, anyway, anyway, I won't, I'm, I'm, I'm going to shut my mouth. Let's watch the video. I think without further ado, we should start. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. All right. I'm ready. I'm shaking. I, I've, I've never done a video like this before. I'm going to piss and cry and shout. <laughs> okay, here we go. Talk about why, if you'd like. Sure. Let's go ahead. So, um. See what you got. All right. Uh, so you, you probably agree that the, uh, a lot of the stakes, at least for the end of season two, um built by the idea that if he is killed in the Avatar state, uh, the Avatar's gone forever, that will break the cycle. Right. Um, yeah, that's, that's uh, as far as I remember, he, uh, they mentioned that, that if he is in the Avatar state, he's killed, breaks the Avatar cycle. I'm not really sure how they know that. That was going to be but... my question. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's how they know that. <laughs> 
First of all, Aang knows that because Avatar Roku, there's a whole episode called The Avatar State. One reason, I have multiple answers for this. One reason, Avatar Roku shows up, he's like, it's time you learn about The Avatar State. If you're killed in The Avatar State, you will cease to exist. Roku tells him that. There was a big dramatic reveal about that. <laughs> it was like a big fucking turning point. Because Roku is just like, yes, it is powerful, but if you fuck up and die, it's gone forever. And so are all the reincarnations. That was a major plot. What? <laughs> yeah, I don't know how he missed that. <laughs> how fucking stupid. Oh my god. Oh my right god. off the bat. <laughs> is this what it's going to be the whole time? No. but No? Well, Good. not really. At least I don't think so. I don't really remember all them. He just was... watched this? <laughs> yeah, he just... With his it. eyes closed and his ears plugged? Are See, you fucking kidding me? I think what he did was... I think he was just skimming through it. I think he was playing devil's advocate. He was embarrassed by how his friend Rags reacted on stream that he just quickly put all this together so he can move on from it. That's my theory. But, um... Yeah, there was a whole episode explaining how the Avatar state works and what happens if Aang dies in it. But also, if you're wondering, well, how does Avatar Roku know that? Or any of the Avatars? Well, um, all the Avatars, they share one spirit. Which means they probably have some sort of recollection of how it all started. So they'll know, you know, if I'm killed in this state, I'm going to be murdered forever. Because this is a Korra thing, but there's a spirit and the Avatar, they're linked as one. And that spirit links into the next person in the Avatar cycle. So that's how that's explained by Korra. But if we're not using that, um, you could think of it as the Avatar state. It's all Avatars coordinated into one body, right? right. That's why when he talks, he has multiple voices coming out. So if you kill right. him in that state, you're killing every single Avatar that is in that body. So, I mean, that's like three explanations there. So you don't get a tally for that one, Buster. Anything you want to add to that? I think the only thing that I could give him, right, is that... How would they know that, you know, the Avatar will not reincarnate again after being killed in the Avatar state? That's the only thing I can give him. Because obviously that is in, left entirely up to chance. Mm -hmm. You know, if the Avatar were to die with all of that, you know, everyone else knows that, oh yeah, all of the Avatars would die. And, you know, it, when you look for... We're not going to use Korra in this, because that's unfair to him. He hasn't watched Korra. Yeah. Right? Also, also, Mahler, don't watch Korra. If you didn't like this, you're not going to like Korra. <laughs> I'm going to watch him end up liking Korra anyway. <laughs> I'm going to be real. If he hated Avatar and he liked Korra, that just killed any credibility for me. <laughs> he hasn't he hasn't watched it, and he has no plan on watching it. But anyway, what that's were you good. saying? Yeah. Uh, the only thing I could give him on that is that... We have no way of knowing whether or not he, the Avatar, would reincarnate after all of them being killed. But to say that, you know, how does anyone know that this would happen? That's just blatantly ignoring it, things that have happened in the show. Mm -hmm. I don't believe you watched the show. Already, <laughs> I don't believe he's watched the show. I think he's bullshitting me. <laughs> yeah. Because that's such a major turning point in the show <laughs> that is so focused on. It's literally the first episode of season two. Like, how how, how did you not miss... How did you miss that? Because you didn't watch it. <sighs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> this is the thing. When it was first introduced, um, I think I was... I could have asked uh, if I asked Wolf or not, but I remember just thinking in my head, like, how would you know? Because <laughs> you'd be dead, Mr. Avatar. Um, I think it's a it's a piece of a, a knowledge that has uh, just been spread around into common knowledge. And it's probably coming from who knows if it's true or not, first of all. Which, that's not really the, the point. But it could, there is enough of ambiguity there. Because the Avatar has been around for a long, long time. I'm really sure how long it is and canonically. I know, and Korra, they kind of uh, retconned <laughs> it to being ridiculously short amount of time. Yeah. But uh, in Avatar Last Night Murder, I forgot what it canonically was, but it's been a long time. It's been several, many, many generations. I just want to stop this right now and just, <laughs> I'm, he's not taking it seriously. He's not. If he actually, like, it's, it's le legit. Who, the guy defending Avatar? No, not the guy defending Avatar. Mahler put this whole fucking piece of shit together. And, yeah. and, and, 
he the best he can get is some guy who hasn't seen it in seven years. He doesn't tell him to watch it or yeah, something or anything like that. That's the big thing. I wonder if he's like trolling the Avatar fans. <laughs> I mean, that could he be. He has horrible. to be. The only thing that I can say is that he didn't watch it and he's just fucking trolling them just to make people mad. I'm not gonna say he didn't watch it because he's using terms. I think what he did is he turned it on the TV and then went and did something else in the other room. Went to the and kitchen just, and <laughs> experimented with his new pasta dish. I don't know. <laughs> I, I just. But yeah, and... it's. <laughs> <laughs> it's just <sighs> I mean like he he hates the new Star Wars shit. Avatar is like the like it has a very it's very similar to Star Wars in a way with a lot of its plot points. Is it? I mean so, I'm I'm not saying like they're exact, but I'm saying like, you know, there's a war going on, right? Yeah, okay. But, and it's but it's more developed. Star Wars is pretty simple in terms of its overall plot. It's go destroy the big ball. Or, you know, save your dad. But the inner conflict with the characters is what's complicated with Star Wars. But in Mm. Avatar, there's politics, um, there's world building, uh, like a better world than Star Wars. Um, Oh, oh, man. You're going to make somebody (laughs) mad with that one. Star Star Wars is just um, a, a fantasy world, but in space. You know what I mean? All the planets are just one, you know, like a desert or a forest or an ice planet, you know? Yeah. But... That's that's what I mean by that. I mean, there's no like. I mean, the prequels tried to do politics; they didn't do it right. We don't have to get into the logistics of no. Star Wars. And we and also all that. we should stop talking about Star Wars. <laughs> but new Ava- video coming out. It's about Star Wars. I w- I really wanted Mahler to watch Avatar because I think it's one of the best pieces of writing ever made. I I won't let minus because I've watched it again, and I will say that there are flaws with every. I I would say. Probably almost everything has flaws, but I think yeah. Avatar's flaws, they don't take away all of the great aspects. There are Which some is flaws. Nice. I also just want to say right now, um, we are doing an entire move, uh, entire movie. <laughs> We're doing an entire, like, uh, what is it, video where we openly discuss and hyper-analyze The Last Airbender as well as The Legend of Korra. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... Stay it, tuned for that. Yeah, stay tuned for that, right? I... Uh, we'll be more prepared for that one too. We're kind of just doing this. Yeah, this Ryan one. just kind of sat me down as like, watch this, <laughs> and so anyway, uh, reincarnations of the Avatar. So it could be there's some scholars in the background. There's, there's been shown that the world is includes a lot of scholarly organizations, and even from season one, they included this. And then uh, there could have been uh, someone who knew, like, in, someone to put things together. Like we have science. Avatar Roku. It happened in an episode. He shows up and tells him. He didn't know that beforehand. He used the Avatar state against a fleet. He could have died. <laughs> and then Avatar Roku, Roku shows up and tells him. It's not like it's not like no one told him. It's not like this is a random thing that happened. Wow, they like he must have not watched this episode. <laughs> this, Look, this is just painful. Can, uh, conjecture by logic and things that this and this and this will happen if this happens this hasn't happened before it's not it's something that could happen uh they're just putting together what might be able to happen if certain conditions are mm-hmm. met within the universe or or atmosphere or whatever i could say the same thing might happen with uh in with the avatar state there might be some scholars who are uh very well-rounded well-studied in the spiritual aspects of the earth and the spiritual nature as if you remember in season one the avatar is st- said to be the bridge between the uh, the mortal world and the spirit world. So, and the, the avatar itself is very connected to the spiritual world, of the spiritual nature of the earth, which is why I'm pretty sure he's called Avatar because he's supposed to be the the representation of all the earth's might and power and all that stuff. Uh, so, there could very well have been some guy or some scholars like so uh, weird the, the, the the Stephen, Stephen the Hawkins. Cheers, the name of Stephen James Cameron's Avatar. Avatar: The Last Airbender came out first. <laughs> <laughs> what were they saying? I he, he said it's kind of weird how it shares the same name as James Cameron's Avatar, the Blue People movie. Avatar The Last Airbender came out first. <laughs> it's, I, it's not like Avatar stole from Avatar Blue People. Avatar Blue People. That's what I call it because I need to make a clear distinction. <laughs> Avatar Blue People. Um, that, that movie's called Avatar because they're putting their bodies into another body in Avatar. It's not Avatar as in... The Avatar is the culmination of, you know, the Earth, you know. Like, it's the Earth's Avatar. I'm, I'm just going off of what Literature Devil said. Um, 
I actually I, I liked that explanation. I yeah, thought it was nice. Yeah. Um. I. There's just a. I I mean we're only like two minutes into this video <laughs> and there's just a clear lack of care. Yeah. Or, well, or even <laughs> or even like uh, you know uh, uh, you know to or even doing any sort of research. You yeah, know, he if, just watched it once. It's not like he like you know he like studied it or anything. It's not like he he was watching and like paying attention and writing things down. He sort of just it, it just feels like he just watched it once. He's like, okay, now it's time for me to make my video. Look, if you're gonna analyze a TV show, right? You know, it, I, I've watched Avatar multiple times, and I still, even though I've seen it so many times, sat down and took notes on every episode I watched. I and, learned something new every single time I watch it. Y- yeah, it, you know, whether it, whether it be a, a new criticism I have or you know yeah. something else to support the show, it's just you can't sit down and make an analysis video about something that you've barely attempted to analyze. Yeah. That's just lazy. You have to be interested in analyzing it too. Like, I, what's the whole point of making this video if you did not like it to the point where you made a video like this? Why not just during a different EFAP when someone asks you about it, it's like, okay, yeah, I watched it, I didn't like it. Yeah, and look, it's <laughs> it's not even to say that you know he it's, he shouldn't make a video about something he doesn't like. He can make a video about something he doesn't like. He just do it right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He doesn't have to like something, but. Yeah. If we're talking about objectivity here, if he's so big about objectivity, he doesn't want to fact check himself or anything else about it. Even during this discussion, he doesn't want to pull up Google just to make sure he doesn't sound like a fucking moron. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I don't know. It, It seems like an obvious, easy thing to fix for me. And the more I continue to watch this, I feel like I'm just going to keep having the same problem. I doubt this is going to go away. I think I'm just going to see throughout the rest of this video, you know, no sense of care for whether or not he's accurate with his information. I think you're right. I think he really does just want to get it done. So that way it's just fucking blah, there. There's your fucking yeah. content. But what kind of, you know, you should be making content that, you know, you give half a shit about. Yeah. Yeah. It's first of all, it's it's rude to your listeners, especially mm-hmm. you who care about yeah, it. Yeah, this you is know? for the people that were upset about Rags's uh, outburst on Avatar. So, who, like, you made the fans even angry. If you look at the comment section, no one agrees with the shit he's saying. Yeah. Everyone's like, "Yeah, try again, buddy. <laughs> Let's try again." Um, <laughs> but yeah, but like, <laughs> even keep doing that. <laughs> even even if even me. Uh, I, I'm making this video responding to him. I didn't pick my friend Jeremiah, who's never watched Avatar and is not interested in watching Avatar, to discuss this with him. I picked my friend Joe, who is just as passionate about the show as I am. You know what I mean? And, and it's, it's not to say that we even agree on everything about the show all the time. In fact, we have wholeheartedly disagreed on a lot of issues and still mm-hmm. disagree on some things within the show. But our, our discussions... Have some objectivity behind it. Yeah. yeah. Because we know the show. <laughs> mm-hmm. And in fact, I've stopped the discussion to look things up to make sure I'm not making things up while I'm talking to you about it. Mm-hmm. I. Uh, yeah. And I just want to preface this by saying um, it's okay that Mahler didn't like the show. Yeah. But if you're going to make a video, make it good. Like, convince me. Like,. Like, show me real reasons why you think it's bad. If you just if you just didn't like it, then just say you didn't like it. But if you're going off of objectivity and you're trying to tell me it's bad, show me things that are actually wrong with it. Not this. You're just saying things without paying attention. So it's it's not objective. The Avatar Avatar the Last Airbender is an objectively really good show. If you didn't like it, that's okay. But the fact that you're trying to make it out as if it's bad without doing any research at all. Like, convince me. Convince me it's a bad show. You know what I mean? It's like, what if, like, if you, like, were to give me real reasons and to make me feel like I was, like, oh my god, I've loved this terrible show my whole life. Like, that would be legitimately interesting and heartbreaking. But you're just making me mad. <laughs> Here's an interesting juxtaposition. Um, I think that Hunter Hunter is a very well-written show mm-hmm. at points. Me too. Um... You know, I, I think it's very well written. I don't like the show anyway. I can say that it's a very well written show, and I ca- and I have no problem with people liking it. I, I, if I'm honest with with you, 
the reasons why I don't like the show are not legitimate reasons. So I don't, you know, get into a big hullabaloo about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just literally the reason why I didn't like Hunter Hunter was that one could argue it was written too well for me. (laughs) The 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 um, the consequences were so finite. And while that is objectively a good thing. Mm -hmm. Right. I didn't like it because I, you know, my dumb baby brain was just like, no, I want him to be able to be powerful again. And I don't need to say spoiler warning because if you don't know what I mean by that, then you're fine. The people who do know what I mean by that, I don't need to tell you. Right. You know, we, those of us that have seen it are on the same page already. Mm -hmm. Anyway, back to the video. Fuck this thing. So weird. I mean, I think, I think he did it on purpose. Honestly, I think possibly, he's yeah, <laughs> it's very possible. He, the, all he, I think all he cares about is like the just the fame and the money at this point. Oh, he wants okay. It. I thought he was criticizing Avatar for having the name Avatar. He was criticizing James Cameron for choosing the name Avatar. Oh man, that's a huge tangent that we're just gonna have to get rid of now. <laughs> uh, no, that's fine. I'll, they they keep theirs in. They do that all the time. Piece of, that's been delayed now because of coronavirus. Yeah, because Corona, like everything else has. Uh, but I think uh, there could have been like some spiritual scholar or mm-hmm. some uh, nature scholar it's weird there's, that they didn't, there's Stephen uh, Hawkins or whatever it's weird they didn't have any sort of even a throwaway line for it because there's a lot of stuff we could what didn't even have a throwaway line for it they had a whole episode dedicated to it how long are we going to talk about this we don't got to get into this it this is the same point sort of assume oh, as, as to how it's possible that they knew it and I would say like oh, yeah. the, the pinpoint of the criticism would be that um the season two finale's big emotional payoff is based on that knowledge and so it's like oh, yeah. how did we know this and it's just like the Again, I, I'm not going to say it again. You don't you, sh- you should know? Yeah, don't <laughs> pause it every time like, he makes okay. the same fucking mistake. Um, yeah, I mean, it, they kind of just do. I mean, there's been so much. It's been Avatar's been around so long, and so much ambiguity that I can we can you kind of accept that someone delved into it somehow. There's some spiritual sage who can uh, tell us this, these sorts of things in the past. Yeah. Um... I, ju- I just want <laughs> I just want to say this literal devil. Lo- <laughs> this literature devil. His name is hard to say. Um, Literature he is, he's doing a fucking horrible job. He is not, he, uh, he's very clearly hasn't seen the show in a long time because he's like, well, maybe there could be the sage. So he's not giving real reasons. He's not actually defending it. He's just like, well, there could be this guy. Is well, there, uh, is, I, I want to go back at some point just to see how long he says it's been since he's watched this because... I'm inclined to believe that it has been. I don't want to watch the first 20 minutes because they don't talk about the show. But he said he says a really long. I don't even think he gave a specific date. I think he just said it's been a long time since he's watched it. That's that's just. Uh, it's like it's like why him? We've already <laughs> we've already gotten into that point. It it really is. He just kind of was like, "Have you ever seen the show before?" Yeah. yeah cool. You're in the video. <laughs> like. <laughs> Yeah, maybe maybe he just ran out of people. It's been like seven years ago, but fuck it, fuck it, just come in the video. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm tired. I just want to finish the video so people stop telling me to do it. Again, like these are more just sort of getting them said. I'm really not looking for one of us to either like concede or or deny or whatever. Just just to oh, yeah. um, explore kind of both sides, how it could be better, how it could be worse, maybe, and then just move on to another one. And this is hopefully brain food for people who both like and don't like Avatar, and obviously <laughs> just looking for. Discussion about it. Honestly, I don't think I've ever met someone who didn't like Avatar unless they're friendly. <laughs> <laughs> everyone holds it up on such a they high d- pedestal. Yeah, uh, I th- for good reason. I think <laughs> maybe, I don't know what it is. Like, I just, we'll, we'll get through some more of these and I'll try and explain it better, like what my experience was, I guess. Um, so, Aang's been uh, frozen for a hundred years. Um, right. And he wakes up, or he's woken up, um, by what I think a lot of people would call like like it wasn't like a cause and effect thing. It was like oh my goodness, like he's he's stumbled across, which is fine. But uh, within the next few months, if my timeline's correct, he like is able to uh, sort of deal with two what I would call very at least by the world's rules, from what I understand, extremely mm-hmm. rare galactic events that like had he woken up a few months or let's say a year later. Uh, he would have lost essentially. Like the Fire Nation would have uh, taken over completely because of Sozin's comet. Mm. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is like, wow, it's really convenient timing that he managed to wake up. Um, how is it convenient that um, he wakes up before a cataclysmic event as a 12 year old who needs to rush to learn all four elements? I 
see, it just sounds to me that his criticism is just, wow, you know, uh, I'm, I really just don't understand why uh, they wrote a story with, you know, some stakes in it. I don't understand why there had to be stakes in the story. I, pref- I would have preferred a story that was super fucking boring and that, you know, there was no fucking, you know, reason for him to have to learn the elements fast or reason for him to have to fight. You know what? Actually, Molly, you're right. Let's just throw out the Fire Nation. Fuck the Fire Nation. Everything is fine. Yeah, how I, convenient that it, he woke up during a war that he could stop. How convenient is that? Oh, wow, that's great. It's all, uh, yeah, how convenient for him to wake up in time to do what he's fucking supposed to do. You know, why don't we just throw all the plot out the window since you have a problem with there being a plot in the show. And look, okay, it... Oh, oh, God. God, it's just... You're telling me he's done this before? He's done this before. He does a really good job. This is one. He does? It's like, here. The, this I sounds was, like fucking amateur hour over I w- here. I was going to say, too, uh, I this this takes away a lot of credibility, doesn't it? You don't even want to watch his other no, shit. No, I don't. He. It, this is another reason why this shouldn't be ignored, Mahler, because this is a big, big gash in your in your credibility. It really is. I mean, I'm, I am... I'm sure that he's made a lot of really great videos with some very interesting commentary, but, like, right now, the only thing that I'm thinking of he is he didn't watch the show, and he probably hates to read, too, because that has plot in it, and he wouldn't want any fucking plot. It... it you can have a problem with a plot because, you know, things happen that are just convenient, right? But... These two galactic events. Let's even let's even well, say. This. Also, I'll even like, say. I'll even say that. Okay, sure. It's pretty convenient for him to wake up in a time where it's like, oh man, uh, this uh, this solar eclipse happens, and you know, even though it's really fucking interesting because it gives this weird edge that could you know yeah, potential yeah, that yeah, could potentially hope. end the war early without Aang having to master all four elements, which has been built up to be a Herculean task that should be impossible. But after that, right, he has to deal with Sozin's Comet, which is this, you know, this is the end game. If this happens, right, he either has to beat the Fire Lord or everything is over. That's Mm. not... You can call that convenience all you want, right? However, that's also called writing, (laughs) where people build a story to a climax. The whole idea is, oh my god, you know, we have to somehow beat the Fire Lord. We get to book three, right? We get to book three. This isn't about Sozin's Comet anymore. Have we learned about Sozin's Comet by book three? Oh yeah, it's 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 been alluded to since season one. It was? You you learn about it in season one. Really? Yeah. I don't I thought we got to it in season three. Okay, no. even better. Yeah, it's okay. foreshadowed. It's not out of nowhere. Okay, then that's even worse. <laughs> because then it's not an issue of convenience, right? It would be convenient. I, I would even say this, it would be convenient if we got to season three and it's like, you know what, Aang, you're really getting close to mastering those elements, but oh, here comes the comet, which even still I wouldn't have considered as convenience because it's like, oh yeah, we're gonna do it. Everything's gonna be okay. Bam! Massive bombshell. But it's not even that. We get to the first season, and then all of a sudden, right, we have this picture in front of us. It's like, okay, well, there's this huge cataclysm coming, and we have to beat it before then. We're getting closer and closer to the, to you know, we're ticking down to the very end of it. We get to season three, where it's a build-up to where Aang has to actually fight the Fire Lord. It's what everything's been building to, and the stress is weighing on him. And it's not because... You know, oh uh, man, we got to season three like I thought it was, and you freaking here comes the comet. But Aang's been training all of these months to prepare for this event should everything go to pot, and everything has. <laughs> so mm-hmm. this is the last chance. Mm-hmm. That's convenience. Yeah. That's not writing. That's not yeah, foreshadowing but- is not good writing. Giving an element of 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 fear, some sort of finality. To, to a show, which a lot of shows don't do nowadays. A lot of the stakes in shows are fucking god-awful. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, no, Joe, giving the bad guy a huge advantage to a small child who could barely master all four elements in a, in a few months' time is bad writing. That's bad tension. Oh, oh he woke up before the comic book up. Wow, I, wow he's gonna win. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Man, you know, wait till Mahler... Mahler, don't read David and Goliath. You're gonna hate it. It's basically the same fucking thing. Also, the 
galactic events are based they're not like fake they're based off of real things that happen in everyday life it would be like Haley's comet can give uh, i don't know like robert extreme power yeah. he's gonna use yeah. Haley's comet he used Haley's comet last time it was, it was around to eliminate the jews so now he uses <laughs> He loses Haley's Comet this year to eliminate, I don't know, Asians. Why? <laughs> well, I mean, I guess the show is about genocide, so fuck it. But I mean, yeah, it's it's like, it'd be one thing if it was just like, oh, I've never seen this before, and it just happens, right? Mm-hmm. But, like, solar eclipses happen, comets happen. It's not like the hand of God came down and was just like, you, Sozin, you will be given ultimate power. Yeah. And he goes, thanks, God, shakes his fucking hand, and now Aang has to deal with that. Mm-hmm. It, it... Also, you have to keep in mind that when Aang froze himself, he was in the Avatar state, so there was probably spiritual intervention where they could, like, see into the future, because maybe spirits... You know, they can't... I mean, this is hypothetical. Oh, this yeah, now we're real. getting hypotheticals here. But We're talking about objectivity. Yes. Hypotheticals are fun, but... I just want to say to... Um, like, the spirits can probably see into the future. It's like, okay, if we freeze him now, maybe he'll, he can wake up. It, he won't have a lot of time, but at least he'll he'll probably survive. You know what I mean? I'll but, give um, it to you. I'll give it to you. It's possible, but, it, but you know... That's not an explanation in the show. So we, no. won't, we won't use that explanation, but... Uh, it, you have you can't just okay. So, um, how convenient is it that Darth Vader is born the chosen one and defeats the uh the Empire, meaning himself and Darth Sidious? Wow, how convenient that the villain was actually the good guy all along. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is the same. Th- you have to accept the rules of the show. You can't just dismiss it. It's explained to you. There's this comment. That arrives every a hundred years. That gives Firebenders extreme what power. What does he like? What does he like? He, uh, he likes the original Star Wars trilogy. He likes the prequels. He recognizes they're bad, but he likes the prequels. Um, he likes uh, a lot of the MCU stuff, which I think everyone does. Um, and he loves Lord of the Rings. Everyone loves Lord of the Rings, except for one guy that they watched who is a literal idiot who thought that saying the word villain is like a fourth wall break in a movie. Wow. <laughs> That's, yeah, that's dumb. Okay, so he likes Lord of the Rings. How convenient isn't that Sauron is this almighty, powerful being, and he has, and he's forged the one ring by use of political coercion and manipulation, and just being a fucking genius. Yeah, that sure is convenient that the plot happened, you know? Mm -hmm. God. How convenient is it? That the ring ended up going through multiple people that eventually made it to Frodo. How convenient. Yeah, that he how saves convenient. the world in the end. I know, how convenient. <laughs> That's what you're arguing when you say stupid shit like that. Also, convenience happens in real life. I mean, this isn't it a does. real point, but like. That's, that, you're right. That does, we, you know, it. it's not something to bring up because, again, we can't just chalk everything up to convenience because that is bad writing. But there's a difference between actual plot and just convenience. So, okay. Circumstance can result in some convenient things happening. But that happens in life, too, you mm-hmm. know? But, like, in, in Star Wars The Force Awakens, they leave the fake Tatooine, whatever, Jakku. They leave Jakku in the Millennium Falcon. Then all of a sudden, they meet Han Solo. Yeah, you want In the middle of space. Yeah, you want to know what's convenient? Is that the Millennium Falcon was there. And yeah. also that Han Solo just happened to fucking find it. See, that's, that's convenient. Yeah, that's real convenience. There's no allusion to it. It just happens. But in this... It's established from the very beginning. This is what's going to happen. These are the rules of the show. And then the solar eclipse is like, okay, we have this hope. You know, it's uh, he checks every day before. There could have not have been an eclipse, but he was checking every day before so, the the uh, Susan's comet to make sure, to see if there was one. There happened to be one, which um, Mahler, his channel took off with the Last Jedi videos. That happened in 2017. There was a solar eclipse before that. So before your great victory as a YouTuber, there was a solar eclipse. So things like that happen. <laughs> Here's the thing, too. I want to point this out, too. 
convenience doesn't have to even be a bad thing. You know what? When I saw The Force Awakens and I was like, oh shit, it's the Millennium Falcon. That's convenient. I wasn't thinking that was a bad thing. I was like, haha, that's funny. That's a that's a cool nod to, you know, the series as a whole. But it is that's a, neat. It is a bad thing. Why was it there though? It doesn't it, <laughs> it does matter. <laughs> Why sh- was it there? It was the just ship there can for change nostalgia. ownership from people. <laughs> Other people get to own the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, Han Solo said he'd probably rather die than end up giving <laughs> yeah. that to someone. But it happened. <laughs> but the bigger convenience is they run into Han Solo right after that. That's the biggest convenience. You're trying yeah. to tell me in a massive galaxy. Well, yeah. Han Solo is looking for his ship, I'm sure. But but if if that's the case, then why do you get rid of it? See, th- 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 we can't talk about Star Wars. That's bad convenience, is what I'm trying to say. Whereas this, it's the rules of the show, and they should be accepted. I got done in with my own statement. That was quick. <laughs> I <laughs> I'm sorry about that. But it no, 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 no. That no, no. That's important. That's good to happen. Um, but these are the rules of the show, and they aren't contradict. You know, they don't contradict at all. They are the rules of the show that <coughs> happen. Get Korra. Yeah, Kor- Korra doesn't exist. <laughs> Korra doesn't fucking exist. Korra ruins everything. You can like The Legend of Korra, just for all the Korra fans out there. You can like The Legend of Korra, it's but just... I respect you less for it. <laughs> you just like a bad show. I mean, hey, everybody likes a bad show. Honestly, though, I would rather watch that than something like Seraph for the End or, um, I don't know, what's a bad anime? I, f- I would rather watch that than Fire Force. I hated that. I watched the first episode of Fire Force, and I didn't want to watch it anymore. <laughs> was that the guy who, like, chops off his arm for his family so they can eat, and then, like, also no! wants to bang his sister? No, no that that's was... Fire Punch. <laughs> that's Fire Punch. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Ten, ten pages in, he's already about to fuck his sister. Five pages in, he's chopped off his arm so his family can eat. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> Um, so I think did we did we make our points about this one yet? I think we did. <laughs> I forgot about that, by the way. Oh, Thanks for reminding me. About I... that. <laughs> um. Oh my god. Oh. Um. But um. Yeah, Legend of Korra is bad. But the point is, how can it be convenient? You already said it. We don't need to say for it a twelve-year-old. To wake up before the world ends. You know, it's really, you know, it's really... It would have been convenient if he came out as an adult as a fully fledged out avatar. We don't have to leave this in, but I just want to say, it is, like, so good that we're editing this. (laughs) Like, let's listen to this before we edit it. Because the amount of times that we say the same thing over and over again, like, you know... I mean, it is in a podcast-style format. This is what they do. You know, they stream it. We're not streaming, but, I mean, we might as well be. But, uh... This is fun. <laughs> yeah, I want to check the time because we're three minutes into this. Yeah, it's uh, we started. It's uh, at almost eleven thirty. <laughs> we spent an hour on the fr- leave the scent. We spent an hour on the first three or four minutes because mm-hmm. it was that bad. Yeah, and uh, just to keep in mind, we have um, we have four more hours. We have <laughs> four. F- oh my god. Four. We're going to be working on this for, like, the next two years. Yeah, we might as well just, like, postpone the KH series for a while. Just focus on this. We don't even have to focus on this. Legitimately, we can do the KH series and we can do this. And we'll just be like, hey, guys, it's our fucking... <laughs> Whoa, hey, guys. <laughs> hey, hey guys, it's, it's, it's us again. We're back and we're mad. And we're going <laughs> to listen to more of this fucking piece of work. That would that wouldn't. How would we be able to focus if I'm too busy playing a video? No, game? it's just we should just be talking about how we're we're. You know, what? I want to say this right now. What's the what's the uh, the date is August second, two thousand and twenty. Oh no! Yeah, August second, two thousand and twenty is when we started down. Was when we started. Oh, you're gonna on this. document how long it takes to. Finish. I want to see how long it takes to finish this. <laughs> I want to see. How long it takes for us to rip this apart? Because mm-hmm. I guarantee you, it will take until I'm going to make a prediction by August second, twenty twenty one. We will be halfway through this. Halfway through. Uh, because I'm gonna go home soon. All right, you want to move on to the next point? Yeah, let's move on to the next thirty seconds. Before what they establish is going to be their only chance to take out the Fire Nation during the Black Sun. And uh, before Sozin's Comet fully arrived, um, despite being asleep for a hundred years. Uh, obviously, that is what I'm talking about is the premise of the show at that point. You, you, but 
Do you, do you see what I- Wait, so you recognize it, yet you criticize it anyway? You're going to criticize the entire point of the fucking show? And, you're, and knowingly, you're going to... Like, I thought it was bad before when he didn't... Sorry, I know we were going to wait 30 seconds, but, like, it just took too fucking long for him to say something right. I just... You... You're going to knowingly criticize... You know that it's the point of the show, and yet you criticize it anyway. At that point, it's not like it's wrong. It's not like the point of the show is wrong. It's not like it's a bad thing. You know? Oh, the whole premise... Just throw the video away. (laughs) Throw the whole fucking video (laughs) away. Because you clearly... You can recognize the premise of the show is this point. And it... Let's just say this right now, right? There is no way to objectively say whether or not writing is good. Ryan said that the Avatar The Last Airbender is is objectively good writing. I believe this, right? The interpretation of writing is subjective. There are things about it that are factual and objective, that being, of course, grammar and, and, and things within it. But other than that, the entirety of writing itself is subjective. Well, there are going to be things, there are tropes that are not necessarily bad, and yet, you know, people will dislike them, and there will be tropes that are bad, and yet people will like them. But, see, but that's a subjective opinion. That doesn't make the show actually good or bad, though. And objectively, bad writing would be um, plot holes. You know, they establish rules... But then they break the rules, or that Deus Ex Machina, which Avatar does have, that's a problem, uh, where they have all these rules established, yet they throw in a new rule last second, so way something new can mm-hmm. happen. Let's, in fact, let's actually, let's, let's establish this now. Here are the rules for objective good writing. We're going to establish this right now. Consistency, continuity, mm-hmm. right? Um, continuity where shows implement continuity. Some shows do not technically play off of this and are not bad shows, right? Some shows are very episodic. and yeah, they like don't the nec- Batman animated series. <laughs> yeah, they don't necessarily tie together, right? But they remain consistent, all right? So, in fact, we can even scrap continuity. So, consistency is, is the first rule. Mm-hmm. If it is consistent in the rules and the universe that it establishes... And the characters. Right, right. That, that, then we can move on to if it's consistent with and in line with the rules that it establishes then it is good writing characters right mm-hmm. if characters are written to be believable right then that is good writing characters have to be believable they, they you know if a character is stupid and attempts to fix this by trying to get smarter you should see that progression right mm-hmm a character will remain the way that they are, but you will see throughout the series that they change to be a better version of themselves and evolve into better people. Let's let's apply this to Avatar real quick. Let's apply some of these rules to Avatar. Consistency. Um, it is the story itself. I mean, the first season is a little bit episodic, but they're all connected and they're all consistent with each other. Um... There are some, uh, throughout the course of the show, it's pretty consistent, wouldn't you agree? There are some points, though, where it's bad. Like, uh, Bato of the Water Tribe, where Aang gets pissy because they, Katara and Sokka want to go see their dad. So he rips up the map to go see him, because they're going to, instead of going to the North Pole with him, they want to see their dad. That's something that Aang wouldn't do. So that's a bad episode, or a bad, you know, progression that's inconsistent. Mm-hmm. If I'm honest with you, right, um... While it it makes sense for Aang to be afraid that they're going to leave him, right? Yeah. And Aang, it, it makes sense for Aang to be afraid of this, right? To the point he went to was not was not consistent. I will say him. this too, right? You one could argue the fact that Aang is a child and children will make you know childish mistakes, and I would argue that that is a childish mistake. The one thing that I think is often seldom overlooked is the fact that Aang is a child, and. I think it's believable that he could make a mistake that seems completely out of character, right? In the same episode, he recognizes how against his character this is and uh, tries to right his wrongs. Um, Right, right. I think 
as as it evolves with the characters, I think it certainly seems very out of left field. While it isn't, while it's not necessarily unbelievable that Aang would, you know, do such a thing, right? As a child, it's believable. As Aang, as 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 a, he's a fucking monk. Mm-hmm. That's where it starts to get skewed for me. Right. You know, it. Not that you know he's supposed to be mastering tranquility and whatnot. It should be firmly established in his head that that is definitely not the right way to go about things. Mm-hmm. It's 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 just that's where it starts to really hit a wall for me. Mm-hmm. Is I can believe that a child would do it. I can't believe that Ang, a child among monks, spending his whole time among monks and gaining their wisdom would believe that that is the best choice for him to make. Right. As opposed for him to discuss it or to do something like that. Yeah, it could have been handled better. It was. The I, the entire point of that episode was simply to show children uh, just you shouldn't lie and you shouldn't, you know, do yeah. shit like this. Um, the lessons in it are really good and really consistent, too. Every episode, I think, has some sort of message that you can take away. Mm-hmm. Um. In terms of other problems, uh, episodes like The Great Divide, that has literally nothing to do with anything. So, I mean... <laughs> I don't even remember The Great Divide. What was that I, one about? Um, the, the Great Divide is a big canyon, and there's one group of oh. people, and then oh. the other group of people that don't like each other, so Aang lies to them in order to make them like each other. That's another thing that he does that's inconsistent. Uh, I just skip that one every time. That's a horrible episode. No one likes that episode. Even the staff of Avatar recognize that as a bad episode mm-hmm. because in the play, they're like, oh, let's just fly over the Great Divide. <laughs> um, and, um, I do remember this episode now that you've reminded me. Yeah. I think I just forgot about it because, again, it's just bad. Yeah, in season two, I really don't like the episode Avatar Day because, um, again, that has really nothing to do with the rest of the story. The only things that happen is... Sokka asks about Suki, he learns some things about Avatar Kyoshi, and uh, Zuko and Iroh split up. But the whole thing about that is that Aang is in prison for something Avatar Kyoshi did, and he's put on trial, uh, and then the, the whole episode is just, it's just strange. And I, 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 I don't know if I would call it bad, I just, it's another episode that I skip. Um, and uh, in terms of rules that are broken... The spirit world is kind of it's kind of inconsistent. How I will it say works. that it is very much so inconsistent. At one point, Roku has to you know they, they have to go they have to jump through hoops and and whatnot in order <laughs> just to talk to Roku for thirty seconds. Um, and other times, Roku just manifests. Himself, yeah, he, he just shows up, which I think you know at, one could argue that like you know. Oh, well, Aang is becoming a more developed avatar. His connection to the spirit world is becoming easier, right? But the thing is, Avatar Roku is doing it. Aang isn't doing it. It's just happening. now. In, that was what I was going to say. Yeah, in, in Avatar State, when he shows up to tell Aang about the Avatar State, Aang is in the Avatar State. So his spirit is probably not in control of his body. So that's one instance where it makes sense for him to be there. Um... I don't know why he couldn't do that in season one instead of having to do this winter solstice shit. He could have shown up right from the beginning when Aang went into the Avatar state. Um, so that's one that's inconsistency. <laughs> mm-hmm. In The Awakening, episode one of season three, he just shows up with Yue, uh, who became the moon spirit. They kind of just show up and give him advice. Um, where other times they have to do crazy shit. Um, the first time he talks to Avatar Roku, he has to wait for a winter solstice light. To sure. hit his statue, talk to him for 30 seconds. In uh, Siege of the North Pole, he has to go to a very spiritual place. It's the warmest place in all of the North Pole. He has to go there to go into the spirit world. Um, uh, when uh, With the Guru, he's obviously at a spiritual place, the Eastern Air Temple. Um, and then... Uh, uh, what's, what's the episode name? Uh, the Avatar and the Fire Lord, where you learn the backstory between Soza and Roku. I th- I'm pretty sure there's a line that says uh, where Roku says, um, "Meet me at my island on the summer solstice." So he had to wait for the solstice for that. Um, but the 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 one the, this is the one that is getting me because I kind of found an explanation for the Avatar State one because he was in the Avatar State, uh, but Roku did kind of just show up. So I guess I'll still call that an inconsistency. But in the Awakening, 
Aang is just in the ocean and he just shows up. So that's an inconsistency. In terms of everything else, I can't really think of anything, can you? Like, is there anything else that's inconsistent? Um... <clears throat> I really don't like how hot Zuko is throughout the entire scene. <laughs> um, I will say, okay, here, here's one thing. The Earth King is based off of a real um, Chinese dictator, or not dictator, a Chinese emperor. Well, I guess he is a dictator. <laughs> but um, he's based off of a guy named Pyongyang, I think. Um, and he was actually a puppet. That's who Long Fang was, uh, you know... In Avatar, he's like he's actually the one in control. He controls the Dai Li. He controls Ba Sing Se. While the Earth King is kind of just a puppet. Um, yet, that's based off of reality, by the way. Um, yet, when the Earth King, when when Long Fang is imprisoned, the Earth King has power still. You know, when people like, but like, like, I don't know. It just doesn't make too much sense to me. He's he was he's been a puppet his whole life. Yet he's entrusted. With military power at that point, instead of Long Fang. I think it reminds me a lot of the United Kingdom in the sense where it's like, well, not entirely like the United Kingdom, in the sense where uh, he's very much so a figurehead, right? But, you know, let's put it like this, right? He's a figurehead, but he does have sway, right? Should should the Emperor allow, should, should the Earth King allow it, right? Something will happen, right? Something will happen. If the Earth... The Earth King could, again, could very much so be like Dai Li arrest Long Fang, and they'll arrest Long Fang, right? But see, but why would they be loyal to him when they're loyal to Long Fang? I mean, it's Long Fang's plan to be incarcerated and then, you know, o like uh, have a coup to overthrow the Earth King. But it's just like, how does the Earth King have authority in anything when he's a puppet? Oh, that is a very, yes, that is a very good point. Um inconsistencies yeah i think that i maybe maybe that would be too complicated for kids to understand but that's still a problem catering to i think kids need to read about pyongyang more often <laughs> actually i think that it's a very good lesson in what happens when you become an emperor of <laughs> I mean, pyongyang was an asshole <laughs> he I... would he would mistreat the eunuchs uh, his whole life i the eunuchs you don't know about that in China. They uh, they're everyone. The servants to the emperor are eunuchs. They castrate uh their workers, and uh, yeah. <laughs> I learned all this recently. I actually did not know that the Earth King was based off Pyongyang. So I looked it up and I was like, "Wait, Whoa. what? <laughs> yeah." So maybe so maybe the soldiers or the the Dai Li are eunuchs in the Earth Kingdom. <laughs> Because they serve the Earth... Well, they don't serve the Earth King, but... I would know. say that explains why they look so pent up all the time, but that that wouldn't make sense, would it? But anyway, um, I think that's the only other inconsistency I can find. Um, I don't know. I can't really think of anything else. Oh, wow. oh, oh, of course. How, Those servants how, how do... would not have good life. Do you understand how, like, the hormonal imbalance... Which, wow, that suck. Anyway, uh, here's, well, here's, suck. here's the big one. The deus ex machina at the end, the ability to take away someone's bending. Yeah. That is literally that was out actually of nowhere. Rule three. <laughs> There's no bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Um that happens. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't take me out of the experience. That's a subjective thing, but objectively, um, that fight technically has no weight to it since Aang has this ability that he can use that he just learned. That yeah. came out of nowhere. Yeah. It probably could have been established, but that would take away the surprise, which is probably why they didn't do it. But, I mean, once you know he's going to do it, I mean, he's going to do it. <laughs> I feel like there is... I feel like the way it could have been established is... Uh, they allude to the power and the mystery of the spirit realm. I think if they had a more established, like world building and like the way the spirit world works and like even just an establishment of just like the spirit world is a strange place and you know strange powers reside in it and there is knowledge to be found there you know i would it, i would go so far as to say it would make sense for if ang is getting to this point he's just like i don't know what to do and he just starts you know actively seeking through the spirits uh you know for help in the same way, and he's done that before. Mm -hmm. He did that before to get information, right? 
So there's no the, the there's nothing saying that he couldn't do it again in order to find out even more. I would it would be I think it'd be interesting for him to go through the spirit world and have all of them be like you need to find someone who's been around longer than, than I think even the, us. um there was actually a cut episode. Do you remember um the face stealer Ko? Yes. Um in season 1 it's funny. He says we'll meet again and it zooms in on someone's face yet you never see him again. I learned that there was going to be an episode that was going to be the start of season 3 where Aang was trapped in the spirit world because he was shot by Azula and it's supposed to be him trying to get back to his body and he was going to talk to Ko again. So that's where that came from. So um, I'm not sure what that episode entails but I mean you probably if you kept that in you probably could have alluded to something important happening. It's so like, maybe they can mention... I mean, they do mention lion turtles. But they don't mention we'll, anything about them. They're very ambiguous. Yeah, they mention lion turtles um, in the library. They, like, check out these weird lion turtle things. I've seen weirder. But um, they don't mention energy bending, which is what it's called. I never knew it was called that, and it's stupid. But uh, the ability to take away someone's bending. There should have been some sort of hint, but there wasn't. Except for the final episode when the lion turtle gives it to him and then Aang has to do it. You could say that there is risk to the fight since Aang has to get up close and personal. Which is probably why I feel still feel suspense while watching it. But it is a deus ex machina. It's still a problem. Yes. So those are the flaws of the Avatar. How long did we talk about that? <laughs> oh, what time is it? 11.42. So we said 20 minutes? Yeah. Um, and he did a four hour uh, thing on it and... Um, He's wrong about everything so far. I want to see if he even brings up the points we brought up. Um, I want to see if I'm even going to remember it. I'm so tired. I'm, I'm looking at my sheet of paper here. Do we have any tallies? Uh, no, we don't. That's We do have a mark where you try yeah, to that's... test to make sure the pen worked. Yeah, but that's not a tally. That would be cheating. Yeah, no free points. Yeah. Anyway, I think we should continue with this. I mean, yeah, but there's a lot of aspects of fate. This right from the show's title, The Last Airbender. He's the one guy... I mean, it's an aspect of fate by itself that he just happens to have um, a relationship with that that monk. What is it? Whatever his name is, Gyatsu or something like that. So so tight knit was the relationship that the other monks decided to separate them so he can get some training done. And his nature, by his very nature, decides to run away because he's a playful kid and he's also a kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's by that by a twist of fate, he was caught in a storm on his way to run away. That caused him to fall into the ocean. That caused him to set to freeze himself, and then he happened to be found a hundred years later. I mean, it's a, it's a spirits, fate, destiny. It's a lot of things that are happening in Avatar: Last Airbender that wouldn't be really all that acceptable in, say, another franchise. But in this franchise specifically, it's more it's more tolerable, if not completely acceptable, because they added in these spirits, uh, the nature of spirits, nature of fate, the nature of destiny, because. Destiny on its own chooses the Avatar. It's kind of like a anyone. There's so many people that could have been the Avatar. Yeah, I never, I never really thought about how the Avatar actually is reborn into the next cycle. I mean, Korra explains it. Um, it it's not really magical. It's just the spirit goes into another person's body um, that happens to be in the other nation. But um, but yeah, it's it's sort sort of just the rules of the universe. You know, I mean, you kind of just have to accept it. You know what I mean? Some people are born with the Force. Some people aren't. Yeah. Well, actually, they changed that now. <laughs> I don't Everyone can it. use the Force. But, um... That's neat. Um, this is... I don't... Anyway, I don't have to get into the Star Wars things. <laughs> I will... I will talk for much longer about this. I will talk for much longer about Star Wars than I will end up talking about <laughs> Avatar. Because I just... Actually, no. It'll be pretty short for Star Wars, but I'm not going to get into it. Yeah. Um... Uh, I'm not trying. I, I just like to use Star Wars content game. Anyway, <laughs> um, I just I just like to bring up Star Wars because, like I said, I I kind of feel like the universes are a bit similar, and also, he's like he's like the best person to pick apart Star Wars. I would say if you're ever interested in seeing if this guy is actually good at what he does, I would say watch his Star Wars critiques, like The Last Jedi. He's doing The Force Awakens right now. You know, it's not that I'm not interested to see, you know, whether or not he's good at what he does. I'm just not interested in Star Wars. Okay. I mean, that's fair. Yeah. It's um, too fantastical for me. Mm -hmm. um, see, that's acceptable. <laughs> it's, it's too fantastical. Yeah. You know? Not not making something up. <laughs> no, yeah. It's, it's just like, I can understand why people like it, but for me, it's just too much. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. But Aang was chosen specifically by fate or by destiny. And you could say that he was frozen by fate. Maybe he was frozen by destiny. Uh, he was destined to freeze. He was destined to be thought out at the right time. And then maybe there is some... Hand- I don't like, though, how he's doing this, though. I mean, he the, he basically made his point and he's still going on with it. It's like, it, it could be fate or destiny. I mean, we're doing that, too, where we keep bringing up the same points, but we're going to edit it out. So, yeah. but, um... Because we're good. We, I mean, we're that's, not, that's, not yeah. a, <laughs> that's not a good defense, though. Um, you know what I mean? He's not bringing up you know things from the show we're saying we're saying these are rules in the show because of this this and this i mean granted there is a theme of destiny and whatnot yeah but that's all you have to say but there's also a theme of choosing your own destiny yes with uh with zuko zuko is the best character in literally anything i love zuko (laughs) and in there because zuko is iroh continue well iroh iroh is the key to why zuko even changes in the first place oh by the way if he says anything about bad about iroh or zuko i'm going to kill this guy (laughs) I'm not even kidding. If if he says anything bad about Iroh, or yeah, if he says anything bad about Iroh, he can say something bad about Zuko, and I'll still hate him. But if he says anything bad about Iroh, I just, I, I just want to say during the first hour and forty minutes, he hasn't, at least not that I can remember. So I mean, that's one good thing. We to one forty one, and then there's this Iroh motherfucker. <laughs> Chose Aang to become the Avatar. The Earth is the one that controls this stuff. So yeah, those are there. I think specifically. For- oh, another inconsistency. Sorry, we were thinking about inconsistencies. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> another inconsistency. Inconsistency in Avatar is um. Sexuality. No. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, Sokka in the Awakening. He's saying we're traveling west to go to the Fire Nation. Wouldn't it be faster to travel east since you're at the edge of the Earth Kingdom? Do they do they believe that the Earth is round yet? <laughs> Ooh, you know that's a really good point. Um, maybe it's because maybe the reason is maybe it's safer because maybe the 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 eastern part of the Fire Nation, since that's for the palaces, it's mountainous. Yeah, the other side is mountainous that they would be going to if they went in that way. So they'd be coming in through the mountains, which would probably be treacherous and difficult to bring supplies also to it. it does give them time to travel and have some fun while the eclipse is upon them rather than just being there and waiting and possibly getting discovered but i mean it would have been faster to travel east yeah. that's unless they believe the world is flat in yeah, which case which... it would have been faster to fall off the world and then back on the <laughs> other side um uh, and uh, what's it called? They they do acknowledge space. Now, uh, I don't remember history all that well, but when we found out space, did we realize that the Earth was round? I know we thought that the, the Earth was the center of everything. We couldn't really disprove that yet. But Yeah, like, we thought the Earth was round by that point. Yeah. So That's the only thing I remember from my they, terrible astronomy class. They they know about space, so they should probably realize that the Earth is round, therefore they probably should have traveled east. Yeah. Unless unless if they made a throwaway line saying why traveling west is better, yeah. but they didn't. Sidebar, um, I took an astronomy class <laughs> that was so boring that I fell asleep several times and just opted not to go sometimes. It was that bad. It was the worst four hundred dollars I'd ever spent. Oh my god! So that was a college class. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, continue. Reason, because uh, is to make you ask these questions. Is there some sort of guiding hand about? Is there some sort of spirit or some uh, nature or will of the earth? That the entire show is about God. Anyway. That kind of <laughs> manipulates events to certain degrees. That was a joke. <laughs> uh, but it's never answered. It's sort of this. Uh, it's there. You might be able to imply it. But it's never specifically answered, hey. though there there are some some uh, evidence there, like the uh, the nature of the spirit realm and how spirits can take form and become enter the world, and there are other spiritual and metaphysical aspects that can help uh, explain that to a degree. Um, so you would sort of imply there that like uh, destiny sort of pushed Kitara and Saka into the into the position of having to wake him up, you know, oh, yeah. through different things and. Um, their timing was close. Yes, <laughs> if they had close. waited any longer. This yeah, but see, true. but see, but see that how is that convenient though? I mean, 
Aang is 12 years old. I'd call that lucky. I I mean, it's lucky that they got him, but, I mean, think about how much pressure it is. I mean, it takes years. Roku says it takes years to master all four elements, but if you you have to do it by summer's end. So that's pretty that's pretty inconvenient to Aang, if you ask me. Well, we like, already talked about stakes. Yeah, I, I know. But I'm just saying, again, because they're bringing it up again, um, it isn't... It I wouldn't call it inconvenient. I would call it sort of lucky, but not lucky he enough. Called it convenient, not inconvenient. What? He called it convenient, not inconvenient. You said inconvenient. I don't know how to speak English. Oof. Very close. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, the... the uh, all I would say is me- mechanically, like, uh, it's just... It was incredibly important to take advantage of those two events. And obviously, the um, other criticisms are... Put- oh, also, by the way, how awesome is it that Avatar... I mean, it, when I was a kid, I wasn't aware of all these. I didn't know what solstices were. I didn't know about lunar eclipses. I knew about solar eclipses, but, like, I didn't know what they looked like. Um comets uh, uh, Haley's comet all that shit that like like i love space and all that sort of shit how awesome is it that all that stuff like whenever i hear solstice lunar eclipse i hear eclipse at all i hear comets i think of avatar i think it's me too pretty great um it has all this it has all the stuff that you don't really see in a lot of other fantasy worlds it's stuff that's not really talking about and it's things that are in the real world so it's pretty interesting yeah, like stuff yeah not really. Oh. What are those? Put to rest by the idea that these are very rare things. Like, for example, it's like, how does every, how doesn't everyone... Like women. Women are very rare things. I said real. Oh, sorry. No. <laughs> what uh, eclipses do. And it's like, because eclipses are very rare in this universe, I guess. Like when... You mean like in every fucking universe. In our universe. Yeah, in our... In our I, solar system. Wait, is he criticizing solar eclipses being rare? Or is he... Or is he criticizing that... Eclipses are so rare, how could this happen between another big event? Which, I'm going to say it again, Mahler, there was a solar eclipse... I don't think this, it's important. This, uh, there was a solar eclipse the same year you rise to popularity. How convenient. I don't think it's important. <laughs> it's it's a story. It, in fact, it's inconvenient. It, it gives them hope. Okay, we can defeat the Fire Lord easily before... Um, you know, the comet. We can do this really easily. They lose their bending. But Azula is in Bossing Say. The Earth King's stupid. He doesn't know who they are. Sokka wasn't there. And he tells Azula, who he didn't know who that was. He thought she was Suki. About the plan. So Azula knew. So the plan failed. And it's like, that is soul crushing. I remember seeing that as a kid. I was like, oh, no, they could have done it. I watched this with my girlfriend who had not watched the show all the way through. And she was so fucking pissed (laughs) when that episode happened. She was like, she was like, no, no. Like she was screaming no at the TV. It was my favorite thing to watch because I was also screaming no at the TV. Having watched it for like the 90th time. I mean, it's, it's just so brilliant. Like you have this hope that it can be resolved. Like, like, call it convenient, but it is great storytelling. It gives you, like, yes, we can beat him so easily, but it fails because th- these horrible, like, Azula infiltrates Ba Sing Se by dressing up as the, the Kyoshi warriors, and Sokka isn't there. All these unfortunate things happen. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, I'll get it. Don't it's worry. great. That's okay. You better not mess um, yeah. yeah. So, in, in that case, then, it's just like, damn, it was lucky he got up. Uh, in time for that, and I, I get it. Like if if a guiding, not Jesus, but some kind of <laughs> higher force is is Aang is better than Jesus. Well, <laughs> going to be pushing things into certain directions. Uh, I I would say that's not preferable, especially because Christianity is not actually represented in in this show because Christianity is not important to the... in the Legend of Korra. It is. Is it? Yeah, that's why it's bad. I'm gonna fucking kill him anyway. <laughs> Well, for me, uh, in in my story, even though it happens in things I love uh, a lot, like I've just um, it'll it'll bring in the questions, of course. Wait, like, what, wait what did he say? just say? Things he loves? Well, just rewind it. Not preferable for me uh, in mm. in my story, even though it happens in things I love. Uh, so, so uh, it's not, okay. So he finds it not preferable, but it happens in things that he loves. 
I don't. That's not even a, an objective point. That's just him stating his. So I should I even go on this? He's just stating his opinion. Hmm. Yeah, let's, let's go on. But I'm just saying, like, I mean, who cares? <laughs> a lot. Like, I've just um, it'll it'll bring in the questions, of course. Like, why aren't you doing more spirit people? Why are you doing more Jesus? You just sitting up there <laughs> like pushing chess pieces. So he wants the spirit world to intervene with the physical world. Um, the spirits don't really give a shit. The I, spirits kind of hate humanity because they destroy their forests. Oh, jeez. I, I don't even know if it's confirmed that regular humans even get spirits. I think it's only the Avatar because you don't really see any normal human spirits ever. <sighs> um, but it's not really their place and also they probably don't have that much power to do anything unless if it's a full moon where the spirits are... You know what? Remember when I criticized... Um, Roku showing up while Aang is in the ocean. It was the full moon during that when the line between spirit world and human world are, you know, I mean, they're closer to get, so maybe it's not inconsistent. Oh. That's why Yue shows up. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. Looks like, the, the, I, like one of my own problems isn't a problem at all. <laughs> See, I looked in my head. I had a reference. I remember it so well. I watched it so many times. You're really on top of this. <laughs> because of the, well, let's say the Eastern mysticism they added in here, the the, uh, the Chinese mysticism, the, the kind of uh, mythology they have in here, there mm. is a lot of, there is a lot to do with fate and destiny and whether or not you choose your own, um, you choose your own, or is there someone guiding your hands? Your ends, you know, the, the power, you go back, the power of the ancestors guiding your family's destiny, which is why they traditionally, Pray to the ancestors, because if you didn't, they might upset an ancestor, and you suddenly you're, I don't know, someone, you're someone keys your car or something. I don't know, but uh, that I want to literally. Key... What the fuck are they talking about right now? <laughs> I want to key Mahler's car. <laughs> I want, I want, I want everything that's happening right now. To, you know what? Since they're already just, they've already gotten fucking. Off I'm gonna go home. No, not um, yet. Wait, um, we got we gotta um, get one more point. Okay. It's not even it's not even midnight yet. You said twelve thirty. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's so much. This is gonna be this fucking exhausting. <laughs> I think it's fun. Fate tied into when you add in uh, the east. Especially hey, for all I know, this could get me popular. I mean, that would be great. I, I've had some people in the comments, because I leave comments on the EFAPs, for like, hey, I'm making a fucking EFAP criticizing your EFAP, and people are subscribing to me. So, I mean, that's another reason why I kind of want to get this out as fast as possible. I mean, this first part, anyway. Oh, jeez. I can't wait for people to know me as the guy that just yells and fucking <laughs> insults people. Look, 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 I can... I'm, I know I'm throwing out some harsh words right now. I've thrown out words. <laughs> you even told me not to say one. Yeah, no. I know I'm throwing out some harsh words right now. I just want to say, I don't normally get this mad about shit, but it's one of those things where when you're saying something that you are just completely wrong about, it's it's just so hard for me to sit there and because I want people to do it to me too. If if I see something that's wrong or stupid or something like that, you should call me out about uh, about it. I don't mm -hmm. care. How that's fucking, why I'm doing this. I don't care how fucking harsh it is. It sometimes it's gonna be harsh because yeah. sometimes I'm gonna say something really fucking stupid. Because if I went around telling people that I think the sky is is green, <laughs> you know. Nobody's going to look at me and be like, well, Joe, you see, I, I think the sky is actually... They're going to be like, are you a fucking idiot? Look, look at this color. What does this color say? Blue, you know? Mm -hmm. like, you know? If, if I say something that is 100% wrong, like, if like again, if they're when they're talking about how, like, where did that whole information about the Avatar state come from? It was one of the fucking episodes. You weren't watching it if you didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Like, it, like... That's yeah. See, like, see, this whole thing takes away his credibility. That's why I'm doing this. It needs to be addressed. I don't care if I'm a small channel and no one sees this. It just needs to be addressed in you know some what, Ryan? way. I'll see it. <laughs> Shit. The Eastern mysticism. Uh, I mean, it exists in Western mysticism too. But when you add in Eastern mysticism, it also adds in that aspect of fate and ancestral uh, destiny, ancestral line, ancestral blood, and so it's very easy to recognize or to acknowledge that there might be some sort of continual uh, 
interference by the spirits or by someone from the past. And that uh, that element is actually in there with the uh, element of the Avatar's past selves, which Aang does interact with on occasion. Specifically Roku, most of... What? <laughs> what? If Aang's a master of all elements, then how... <laughs> what? Then how come he can't bend to surprise? <laughs> what? The element of surprise, Ryan. Oh, wow. Ah, I'm going to go hit the drums. Anyway. First of all, mm-hmm. uh, I guess Roku went off to find his own TV line or something. I don't know. But, but uh, <laughs> they he's, he he convenes with the past lives of the Avatar. There are spirits. There are spiritual uh, spiritual realm. The Avatar is noted as the bridge between. There are spiritual realm. I'll agree to that. <laughs> the mortal realm, spiritual realm. So those aspects are in there. Those aspects that are tied specifically to fate. So yeah, uh, the Sotan's Comet is very rare and is very lucky that they found Aang when they did and, and and that Katara was able to break that gigantic boulder of ice with uh, <laughs> Sokka's little bat. She didn't do that though. She she was, first of all, she was waterbending. She was mad at Sokka and that showcases that she has a lot of potential and that causes the iceberg to emerge and then she hits the barrier with the thing and then i don't think it's her that breaks it open i think that her cracking it lets in like oxygen and then that wakes up ang and then ang blows it open that's an interpretation though i don't know if that's confirmed but that's how i always saw it i mean hey man i want to be real i i don't give too much of a shit about that one <laughs> like it... You're trying to tell me this thing has been frozen for hundreds of years and, you know, some... I mean, they even make fun of that. It's like, I survived in the iceberg for a hundred years. Oh, good point. (laughs) Um, It's going to be real. If you hit anything with a rock or a piece of metal, I mean, it'll do something. I mean, criticize that. Oh, how did he not survive? How did he survive for a hundred years in an iceberg? That's a really good point. (laughs) But that's just the rules of the show. Okay, and also, I mean, can you, I mean, actually, it has been proven that you can't survive while being frozen. You essentially die the minute you're frozen. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, criticize about that. I would say, yeah, okay. I mean, you're right. <laughs> I mean, that's it. Thing. Uh, his little weapon. I forgot what they're actually called. But, oh, uh, the boomerang? No, that's the boomerang. I forgot. Oh, right. Weapon. Sorry, yeah, I know what you're It's club. About. I forgot what they're specifically called. You should know. No, it's a, a machete. It's, no, it's a specific thing. It's not just a machete. Wait, he has two weapons. One of them has, like, the little blue ball in it. The other one is a machete. And she uses the one with the blue ball in it. Yeah, I don't know what it's called. Yeah. Man, that's giving me blue balls just thinking about it. I can't remember what it is. That's pretty hot. <laughs> no, but I what it's specifically <laughs> called. But she was able to break that thing on her own with her puny little... I'm cutting that out. That made no sense. <laughs> ...arms. They break that gigantic block of ice and free Aang right when he needed to be. So it, he needed to be emerged a lot sooner. I'm just saying. I'm just, I, I'm, the world needed him a hundred years ago. <laughs> this is, you know, is, is that what he just said? Yeah, um, he just said right when the world needed him. No, they needed them for a very long time. Yeah, I. <laughs> That's I, why I, I don't, don't mind their criticism of Katara just like taking one whack to the iceberg and it breaks open. Three whacks. Oh, just th- saying. Oh, three whacks. Oh, geez. Sorry about that one, Ryan. Hold on. <laughs> Oh God, my bad. <laughs> it's uh, also you have to remember that the Avatar is there. Oh, stick in your ass, by the way. Uh, well, in the first place, to calm certain events. Oh, I didn't mean now, to it's, turn on. I didn't mean to turn it's, on. Yeah, imply that it's possible that an, a, an Avatar could go their whole lives. Oh, pause. Oh, it's ruined. During a world-changing event, Roku almost did. He was really old by the time uh, his big calamity came upon him. But there usually is one, at least one gigantic thing in a generation. But the Avatar is specifically there to do this sort of thing. It's put He's put there by fate or by the, the fate of the Earth or whatever you want to call it. But the Avatar isn't the Avatar because the Earth chose him to be the Avatar. Or some, whatever you want to call it. I mean, he's not really chosen. He's kind of just born. Chosen, more like Sozen. <laughs> I... it's, not like, it's, it's not like Darth Vader. He wasn't the chosen one. Well, I mean, he was. I mean, no, Aang isn't really the chosen one. He was just born the Avatar. He didn't even want to be the Avatar. Well, in a, in a sense that, well, I mean, Anakin Skywalker wasn't 
he was he was he wasn't like just the cho. He was he was born that way. He was born with that connection to with the what the he was born out of a virgin in the forest with, with the fucking midichlorians or whatever the fuck. Yeah, the, no, I the prequels suck. I don't even know why he likes them. <laughs> I do, hey man, remember we all like something that's not. Good. I'm not saying like he's stupid for liking them. You can like something and he recognizes that there's that they're bad. If you were to say that they were good, that's uh, when I would like call I know him stupid. Like, I know fairy tales bad, but I like fairy tales. <laughs> Call it. That's the easy way to put it. the Earth chose him to be the Avatar. Okay. That's how it goes. Okay. And then it's rare in the, to begin with, and but there's also inherently in the aspect of fate. Well, it was interesting you brought um, up Roku because uh, so the next thing, this is when I was mm-hmm. just uh, sticking in right. the old noggin. So um, they make a big deal about how the Avatar can speak to the, the past Avatar, specifically Roku, by going to um, it's like a fire temple and he needs to. Uh, right. Enter the temple's like sacred room once the winter, the light from the winter soul. I mean, we kind of talked about this, didn't we? Is he gonna bring bring up? Hang on, let's just let's just listen real quick. Solstice hits the statue's eyes. He can um, speak with Roku directly. I think right. um, the way he's made aware of that is through uh, Roku's dragon in the spirit yeah, world. Um, Enter the spirit world, and he was able to be guided there by Go- Goku. Yeah, <laughs> Roku. Goku. <laughs> um, <laughs> Roku's animal. So, yeah, so, so it's like a huge deal when he finally gets to speak to him, and obviously he learns um, a lot of important stuff from that. But then uh, there are other instances where Roku sort of casually shows up, and it just it confused me a little bit. You've got No, see, but see, I already explained this. <laughs> I already explained why I thought they were inconsistencies, but I explained why some of them make sense. Um, so uh, the one in... Uh, in Sea to the North Pole, he's in a very spiritual place, the extremely warm climate where the where the koi fish are. I mean, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have a problem. I think the one he's going to bring up are the ones in Avatar State, um, in uh, The Awakening, which is the one that I thought was originally a problem. Let's find out. Okay. Got, um, when Aang is out, like, in the middle of the ocean, and he's... Yeah, okay, so The Awakening. It's the full moon during that. That's yep. when the spirit world is, and the reality are are blurred. Even Yue even shows up. That's how I know it's the full moon. Uh, cause she, I, I think she only shows up when it's the full moon. Uh, but, um... Jeez. Yeah. Sokka's uh, girlfriend turned into the moon. It's rough, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um... But, yeah. I mean, they, they explain that. Now... Why Why did Roku have to speak to him the first time doing that? I don't know. Maybe it's a rite of passage. That isn't explained. That's to be fair. Um, oh, make a point. What? Make a tally. He made a point. Give him one. Just write it on your hand. Put your hand underneath it. Or don't. God. All right. One point. Why? Why does he have to do this the first time? That's that's his point. Not that he's he's probably going to say the rest is inconsistent. I came up with answers. This one. Why did he have to do all that shit in the first place? That's not really explained. Yo, I mean, I mean, Gyatso did say there's someone you need to speak to when you turn 16, and maybe they were planning on doing this ritual, but that's not really explained. So. Um, and Gats was fucking dead. Rip, <laughs> got him wrecked. Also, oh. um, well, if, if that were the case, I where they were gonna do that, where they where they were gonna do that rite of passage, why wouldn't why wouldn't Roku just direct him to the Southern Air Temple again, rather than in the dangerous Fire Nation? He he forced them into the Fire Nation to go talk to him. But if if the rite of passage for that would have worked in the Southern Air Temple then why wouldn't Roku just direct him to one of the air temples where they would be a lot safer? So, yeah, that's one point for you, Mr. Man, Mauler. Um, On that note, <laughs> what time is it? Um, It's I, it's 12.10. Uh, should we listen? To, I think we should listen a bit more, see if he has anything else stupid I'm to say. Tired. Really down on, like, his motivation. Roku shows up and gives him a bit of a, an Obi-Wan style, like, Luke, let's get going, buddy. Like, you gotta do it. This is important. Um, He's in the... Uh, the finale, where, well, I think it's the one before the finale, I can't remember. Oh, and on the lion turtle, I'm pretty sure it's established that lion turtles are extremely spiritual. It is. So, yeah, and also at that point, Aang is extremely well-versed into the spirit world, so we probably can just call them at will. At that point, he's a fully realized avatar. 
Sort of. I mean, he still has, Toph even says, he still has a lot to work on your earthbending, so. Uh, when he's talking to, um, about killing Ozai, like, obviously Roku gives his uh, perspective on that one. The, oh, yeah. Uh, I assume uh, he he would have been, let's say, in Aang's head in some degree when he when he becomes Godzilla at the end of season one, because, like, I doubt mm. Aang knew what he was doing with that. It was more. Well, I yeah, that. I mean, he was in the Avatar state, so yeah, Roku was in his head. All the Avatars were in his head when he became Godzilla. Uh, but yeah. Uh, the other Avatars. Then there's, um, do you remember Jong Jong? The, um... Oh, I, this I... one. Okay, this is another... Okay. This is the inconsistent one. Uh, the way I interpreted this... So the scene is... Aang comes in to see Jong Jong, you know, the deserter. This, uh -huh. is, this is season one, the deserter. Um... He wants Zhang Zhang to teach him firebending because Aang's not sure where he's going to get a firebending teacher in the future, so he might as well get one now. So when he comes in, Zhang Zhang is like, if a fish were to go to this river, does the fish know the river's destiny? No! Only that it goes on and on. He cannot imagine the ocean. And he's like, you are not ready! You are too, too weak! weak. <laughs> and then think I am weak? Yeah, and then Roku shows up and he's like, Oh, no, 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 not you, Avatar Roku. <laughs> and then Roku's like, you will teach the Avatar firebending. Yes, I will teach you. Now, the, <laughs> the way I interpreted that is that they, that entire first part where he's where Zhang Zhang is giving Aang the, the fish speech, that's actually in Zhang Zhang's mind, him predicting how the conversation's going to go. So the Roku thing is in his head. It's not really what happens. So in an actual canonical... It, this is the way I interpret it. This is not, I'm not saying that this is true, but in like the way I, inter I interpret it, in the canonical sense, Aang walks in and he's like, Master, I need to learn how to firebend. Then Zhang Zhang instantly goes, I will teach you. <laughs> uh, th that's just how it feels to me. But if it is, if all of that really did happen and Roku did show up, how come he's able to just show up? Yeah, I will have to say this, that is that is just a major inconsistency, and as much as I would like to believe that your interpretation is correct, that is headcanon. Yeah, that's not that's not true. But that's still not a point, though, because that this is still the same point that Roku is inconsistent, so that's, that's your, it's still your only point. Actually, wait. What? Because this point is why... Well, I think the full sun was out, so that's why he was... <laughs> the full sun was out. Um... <laughs> That that this first point that he has is because why did Aang why did why did Roku or it's never explained why Aang has to do this crazy shit first to talk to Roku. Um so this next point would be why is Jong Jong able to Um He gets another point. I mean, yeah. He is in the White Lotus, so he's probably spiritual, but how is he able to see him without it being the full moon? How is he able to do it without going through the winter solstice? So, I'm yeah. telling you the full sun is important for this <laughs> one. So that that's two for you, buddy, and that's being generous. Um, so, wow. Uh, how, how, long, how long has... I mean, how long has this gone by? This has been, what, ten minutes? About and, ten minutes. And you have two points so far, buddy. We got... So that means we only have about... Um, let's see, 50, and then 63 times, so that would be a, a, about 230 more minutes to go. <laughs> An Asian fire teacher, fire, fire bender. Who's, oh, yeah. He's yeah, like... That, that, was, he, was he part of the, uh, the Lotus? Why the fuck did I just do that? I'm... Uh, what? Did I say 230 more minutes? What I meant was 230 more episodes. Oh. <laughs> because I'm going home. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think, I think on the Zhang Zhang note, uh, we cannot see into the river at this point. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. Yeah, I can't imagine the ocean without a good <laughs> night's sleep. Yeah, so I think, um, this is going to be the end of episode one. Um, I know Mahler's going to make fun of us for, uh, doing this in parts, but hey, I mean, you made this shitty video and we don't have all the time in the world to break it down. Uh, but we are going to I'm do a, it. I'm a very busy man with a whole <laughs> I'm not. lot of depression. And I... Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> look, I have to get back to watch to watching Avatar, okay? Yeah. Also, uh, See, that's, that's the thing, too. Even though I've rewatched this every year, I made sure to finish rewatching it this year before making this video. So it, it was fresh in my mind when talking about it. Legitimately, I just want to go home and watch more Food Wars. <laughs> I really like Food Wars. I haven't decided whether or not it's a really good show. I don't care. I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, 
But yeah, uh, next time we're going to be, I don't know, tackling another 10 minutes of this video. Spending, uh, how long has it been? Two hours doing this? Hey man, you know what? If he gets to do a little mini four hour video, we could do, I used Several. to do... Hey man, I used to do streams. I can do long videos. I just want to go to bed. <laughs> That's understandable. But this is okay. So this is how we're going to be doing this from from here on out. Did you have a good time, Mister Sir? I mean, not a good time as in you enjoyed listening to this guy, but did you have fun discussing this? I mean, I, I like getting mad every now and then. <laughs> this is a good way to get out all the steam. I've actually had a lot of pent up anger, so I'm just going to take it out on this video. It's, I'm it's also it. fun to that. like. A lot of people, they don't understand what the appeal of Avatar is, so this is a good way to, like, I mean, obviously there's spoilers in here, so no one's going to be able to watch it, but it's good to just, like, talk about it. Like, say the things you want to say to someone you want to watch it. I've been trying to get Jeremiah to watch Avatar since I was in seventh grade. He just doesn't like it. He, he won't watch, well, he can't say he doesn't like it when he hasn't seen it, so he has to watch it. He likes Attack on Titan, he likes fucking shows with politics and world building, and good character, so I'm like, you would like Avatar. I'm Why doesn't like, he like Avatar? Because he won't watch it. He just won't watch I think it's in, out of spite. <laughs> I That sounds about right. That's funny. Also, also he, you know how he is. He only likes a show where people die. I mean, people die in Avatar, but like they're not on screen. Does That's... he like the Dragon, Prin the Dragon Prince then? No, he hasn't. He's not going to watch that. Why? <laughs> he doesn't have Netflix. Uh, but, um, yeah. But he does have the Lord. <laughs> but yeah, that was uh that was this episode. That was episode one. Um, um <laughs> how many times have we done that? I don't know. <laughs> how many times we do it off off camera? How many times we do it on camera? I don't even care. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought we were gonna do it there again. Uh, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, um, um <laughs> can, I, can I talk? <laughs> Sorry. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um so uh people that have been watching Mahler and uh, I know I've gotten some subscribers that have been looking forward to this I hope you enjoyed and I hope this brings about many people and Mahler if you're watching this I want you to know I respect you I respect your videos and I love EFAP it's just like this video sucks and it needs to be addressed and broken down and you should watch Avatar again I don't I, I know we've only discussed the first 10 minutes but I hope that by just by that, by how long we were able to talk about this and actually discuss it rather than this little prick that couldn't defend a single thing because uh, he didn't watch the show. I hope you're understanding that uh, a lot of the points that you've made, even in the first 10 minutes, are wrong and that you should give the show another chance. I'm not saying that you'll probably like it. I mean, I think you would like it. But if you don't like it, I just want you to recognize that this is a good show um, and... Uh, I mean, this was a bad video. I mean, everything about it. Yeah. Look, I'm I'm just gonna be forward about it. Um, I don't th if Mahler, literature literature devil. I did it. There you go. <laughs> um, I don't think you guys are gonna like me for a lot of the fucking harsh things that I'm saying. But I'm gonna be entirely honest with you. You weren't prepared to make this video by just the first ten minutes of me watching this. And while there are some things that I have enjoyed to hear you talk about, it's very clear that you were unprepared. And you didn't give a shit. And if you think I'm wrong, then rewatch the show, remake the video. Yeah. And also, why do it like this, by the way? I mean, if you're going to do it like this, do it live. But, like, why not make an actual review like you usually do? I don't know why you did it like this. I mean, this was a bad way of doing it. Discussing it, too, with someone who, who has barely seen it. Who hasn't seen it in a long time. It's just my point. It could have just been done so much better. Mahler has said before, one day he will make objectively bad content. And this is it. And, this, and it needs to be addressed. This is going to gash Analy your credibility. Forever. Analyzing objectively bad content that you make is a good way of improving yourself as a yes. critic. And I will, I will be the first person to say, right, that... Uh, I, I can be wrong about things. And in fact, I'll even go so far as to say, I can be really fucking harsh about things. And I already know I was in the beginning. <laughs> but, you know, I'm going to give you shit where you deserve it. It doesn't sound like you've watched the show. Yeah. It, it sounds like you've watched some of it. It, it doesn't sound like, like you've watched all of it. It sounds like you've watched someone else talk about it. It sounds. It doesn't even... That's a, it sounds like you read Spark Notes. <laughs> 
and you forgot half of it before the test. Um, but yeah, I would say give it another watch. Actually, watch it too. I, maybe he was watching it and was looking looking for things to critique, and that's a bad way of going about something. Maybe yes. he felt forced watching this because a lot of people were upset, so maybe he felt forced. I would say watch this on your own time when you actually. You know, I, I feel like you should give it another chance. I'm not, I'm not going to force you to watch it, obviously. I, I don't have the power to do that. Um, but I would say give it another chance and just try try your best to enjoy it. And um, I don't know, if, if, if you still don't like it and if, if, you, if you think... I mean, I'm going to say right now your points that you made in this video are not right. But if you think... He's that made two. Made two. What? He's made two. He's made two points. Um, if, if you think that your points should be heard by people and you think that it can you know it can show that avatar is objectively bad make an actual critique video of it um but yeah i don't know uh, maybe he's not maybe he said before that he is good at talking about certain things so maybe he's just not good at talking about avatar maybe he should just stick to the mcu lord of the rings and star wars but i'm gonna be real um i'm gonna say this Here's another important one. Uh, make the content that makes you happy. If you felt forced into making this video, and it certainly feels like it from the first bit of this that I've seen, yeah, it, just the the lack of uh, attention to anything in the video, um, don't make it. Don't make something that you feel you're forced to make because it's going to turn out shit. If mm -hmm. this is any indication. And yeah, we've only watched the first 10 minutes. We still have hours to go through. Yeah. I want to watch some of his stuff to see what his other critiques are like. They're long, but yeah, <laughs> you no. should definitely watch what them. What I mean by I want to watch them is I absolutely don't want to because <laughs> I will never sit down and watch a nine hour long video. But if I ever have that much time to kill, uh, I'll certainly... You can watch it in bursts. <laughs> I could probably... Uh, I mean, if I ever had Wi-Fi on a plane... <laughs> Like if, like if I was ever on a plane ride to go see my dad, that's a nine-hour flight. I could, I could kill, I could kill nine hours doing that. Not mm -hmm. sure. I mean, you know, I, you know, I could do it in bursts. <laughs> yeah, I could. That's what I usually do when I watch his videos. I'll watch like I'll put it on before I go to bed, and then when I wake up in the morning, I'll finish it. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, no. Uh. I just want to say this one more time because I know I just said it, but I'm gonna say it again. Don't make content you feel forced to make because yeah. it will always turn out bad. Always. Yeah. I haven't been making content that long, but it's what you always hear. And honestly, I've already made some content that I felt forced to make. I threw it in the trash. I threw it in the garbage. I didn't even give a second thought to it. The minute I realized that I didn't want to make this, I stopped. Mm -hmm. You have to make things you give a shit about. Yeah. It's just, it's the only way. To, it's It's like art, you know? Yeah. You should do it because of your of your passion for it, not because somebody told you to do it. Right. Anyway. Um, but yeah, that's the first ten minutes of this. Uh, uh, rate, comment, subscribe if you if you liked this. Uh, ring that bell if you want to get notifications. And uh, yeah. Everybody, leave Ryan a kiss in the comments section for me. Um, but yeah, uh, that's. Can I kick the microphone? No. <laughs> um, Can but. We punch it? No. Stop it! I'm trying to end the video. God. Oh, they're seeing it to real life. They're seeing how we actually treat each other. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. Hot. That's, that's the end of this video. Bye. <laughs> hey, Brian, you want me to get some milk?